This is my show for Blackfish for the month of March, and this is work completed within the last year. The title for the show is Landscape, um, focusing on tight flats, marshland, and um, uh, swamp <laughs> areas of where I live, which is on the coast around Newport. I spent this last year uh, rediscovering my roots as a landscape painter. Mm -hmm. um, in my 50 years of painting, this is where I began. And I decided as subject matter to choose places I loved. I drove by every day, and it was sort of like the old bucket list, you know, someday I'm gonna paint this. Mm -hmm. And I started with, uh, on the road between Newport and Toledo. It's called the Yaquina Bay Road, and it's the most picturesque um, mileage you can uh, see. And there are several places where the Yaquina River and Tide Flats are just right next to the road. I tried to set a, a goal of a painting, um, at least a painting a month. Mm -hmm and ended up doing two paintings a month. And I love, I let the inner paint of me come out. I've always worked in oils. I, I love the whole process. And I made it a goal to do all of the composition, the drawing, the underpainting. Many of these are started with red underpaint or bronze or uh, yellow and then, after I had it all set up and had gone to the site and made the decisions and color uh, studies, then I went back to the studio mm -hmm. and did these in two hours. I timed it so that what I wanted to do was to in paint passages in one fell swoop. So I set up what, a, what the palette might be like, of course, with a lot of improvisation in the meantime, and started the painting um, and quit when, it, and when the two hours. And whatever I had, that was it. And it either worked or it didn't. So some of these uh, were edited out because you don't hit every time, unfortunately. Uh, these were, this is a series, there are two others in the show on the riverbanks that is out on the Siletz River and at the park which is called Moonshine, not because the moon shines, but because they make moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> you kind of want to watch that park and not go there at night. You see a bottle of... Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so these were great places to deal with the um, landscape in these huge boulders in this particular part of the Siletz River. This is a painting I really like because it fits right now with the snowpack and that's in the uh, Coast Range and I call this a uh, snow melt Coast Range and it was a nice way to feature what happens when the beautiful pristine snow melts you've got old tires and garbage which is not as overt a political statement as my work has taken in sure, the past. Sure, sure. And so, <laughs> anyway, this has got, I was hit up about this and I was going to deny that I had used spray gold paint. I was going to say that that was actually gambling gold, but it's not. It is <laughs> gold paint underneath, which really gave a, a nice um, interplay of the shape. This painting is uh, called Beaver Creek at Ona Beach. and. This, believe it or not, is Highway 101. Um, I have kiddingly said that ODOT was a better aesthetic bridge <laughs> planner than I thought, because that is how it works. You drive down underneath here to set your kayaks off to go in that direction, to up Beaver Creek, a natural area, and this way to the ocean. We noticed that this may be your largest uh, painting here. Yes. But compared to your last show, this is uh, small. Yes, this is Is, is there any reason why you have uh, 
moved on to smaller uh, size paintings? The landscape dictated it. I thought mm -hmm. the scenes did. Um, I didn't see making them larger as making mm -hmm. them better. And mm -hmm. I am a firm believer if it's bigger, it's better. <laughs> I have bought the American way. <laughs> But you want but a, a these, canvas that you can carry to the, yeah that yeah. I could carry to get out uh -huh. not because I would be rained out uh -huh. or the wind would come up yeah. and I'd be taken like a sail uh -huh. and this I was really tickled with how it turned out because of the integration of the water the the with the bridge and also with the foliage around. Um, Again, I limited myself, even though it's the larger, to two hours to do it. Got mm -hmm. a bigger brush. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was really, that is true. You do get the size brush to the size painting you're um, going to so that the mark itself fits. This um, is a painting that has moved people in various ways that I did not anticipate. And one of the ways is that people ha I have told me that this is where their ashes of a loved one were spread. Mm. I, that was shocking. And pets. So this seems to be a send-off of souls uh, out to the sea. And you never know when you pick a place to paint what other things are going to, to happen with that. Uh, Beaver Creek Marsh is just downstream, or upstream actually, from the painting we, I was just talking about. This was a challenge that I set up for myself for uh, a time of day. In the summer, as it gets darker, there's that funny glow and light where you can't really see between day and night, and the colors kind of get really luminous. And I had not ever tried that before. And this is how I uh, resolved it. And I think it, it works. It, and again, this is an underpainting of bronze uh, paint. And then I have put like a green under that. All of that dried before I started with the imagery there, taking advantage of those colors to uh, push myself into these kind of iridescent blues. Really been rainy, and I call this Silk Coos Lake. This was when all the flood warnings came out, and the gray uh, that happens so much when it's rainy and cold during the winter. And I wanted to put that water as it's just about ready to flood over everything and to catch that when the tide was in. Again, I s used a red underground to push these grays into a mm -hmm. color. Marsh land, and when one walks along and looks down in the wet, you see floating these pieces of driftwood that don't really move. They just sit there and <laughs> take a long time to disintegrate and rot. One of the most abstract of all your... Yes, and, and it's because of doing the real close-up of it uh, mm -hmm. throws the viewer off on how they're seeing it. In other words, I've taken the uh, viewer and forced them to look up close at what I was seeing, mm -hmm. which is standing in water <laughs> and looking down. Um, these paintings are fairly small. Again, this is a continuation of Moonshine Park at the Silets, uh, another part of the river where these uh, strange rock formations are. The smaller one here again is the close-up of the driftwood, only it's a, a smaller study of it before I did the larger painting. And this last one again, back further from the bank and looking out towards the uh, river at, at Silets where these rocks are um, uh, filling the river almost. This painting is called Arctic Wolf Meets Global Warming and part of the foliage is the skunk cabbage that is the wolf. It's a wolf that's named Odot after the uh, highway department and that is their submissive pose as they come toward a person. The reason it's called the Hatfield is the Hatfield Marine Science Center in Newport has beautiful park 
and walkways where you can go. And that's one of my favorite places to walk. Mm -hmm. And I have looked at this scene forever and loved it. And I thought this time I'm gonna paint it.